So to keep that in mind, let's, let's have 100 visitors out here for next Lord's Day. There is a word. There is, there is a word in the epistle of Paul to the church at Galatia. The chapter is 6, and I read for you at verse number 1. I shall read from the message translation, but I'm going to teach from the King James translation. Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivenly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens. King James says, bear ye one another burdens. And so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have given, you have been given, and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Living with life's loads. A tag for this text at this hour. Living with life's Loads. One does not have to be a Philadelphia counselor of law or a Howard graduate to know that these are days that try men's souls. They are both chaotic and confusing, tempting and trying. The truth of the matter is we are a heavy load people living in a heavy load society. We are a pilgrim people, yes, but we are burden bearers. Even as we march toward the new Jerusalem, the city four square, we are struck down by struggles we are pulled down by problems. We are beat down by burdens. And we are held down by hardships. All of us. Not some of us. I say all of us force to live 
with the life's load. Sooner or later, you'll have a burden to pick up that's heavier than you can carry. And many of those burdens are seen. But there are some burdens that we carry that are not visible to the naked eye. And I'd like to think that those are the burdens that are even more difficult to carry. It's when we have to carry those burdens that are not always visible to the naked eye that we know that are perpetual heartaches and headaches that we have to cry when we faking it while we try to make it. Those are the burdens that ought to teach us lessons of restraint. Those are the burdens that ought to teach us how to love one another. Those are the burdens that ought to teach us not to be so critical of other folk. Because if we could exchange our burdens with others, I guarantee you, you'd be glad to take yours up. Because no matter how heavy you think your burdens are, there's somebody sitting next to you on your pew that's carrying burdens heavier than yours. But there's good news. There's good news in the air because there's good news in the scripture. And the scripture suggests that there are three things you ought to do with your burdens. I read them, three different scriptures. And one of the scriptures says, every man should bear his own burdens. And then he turns around and says, bear ye one another's burden. Almost sounds like a contradiction. Bear ye your own burdens. And then he turned around and say, Bear ye one another's burdens. And then there's another passage in the Bible that says, Cast your burden. Now wait a minute now. I'm supposed to bear my own burdens. I'm supposed to bear your burdens. And then he turned around telling me, Cast your burden on the Lord. Now, which one is it? See, that's why I like talking to you. You ask such good questions. Yeah. It's all three. And so I want to look at three different passages, three different words to describe three different kind of burdens. You got time for this, do you? He says that there are some burdens that require self-assistance. Oh, bless his name. Yeah, there, there are some burdens you ain't got no business asking me to carry because they require self-assistance. There, there, there are some burdens burdens that are too heavy for me that requires mutual assistance. There are some burdens that I have to get some help carrying. And believe it or not, if you just keep getting up in the morning, you're going to discover that there are some burdens that require divine assistance. They too heavy for me. They too heavy for me and you. I have to take them to the Lord and leave them there. In other words, some burdens ought to be shouldered.
some burdens are to be shared and some burdens are to be shedded. Oh, that's a mighty good word this morning. You see, Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 5 suggests that some burdens are to be shouldered. He says it, that some burdens require self-assistance. Now, on the surface, there seems to be a contradiction in verse 5 and verse 2. But burden in translating in verse 2 and verse 5, believe it or not, are two different words. And the two different words in Greek are there for a reason because they are suggesting a different kind of burden. So when he says in verse number 5, bear ye your own burden, it's the word phathion. That's spelled P-H-O-R-T-I-O-N, phathion. And it means to carry. It means something that is carried. It's a word that is usually ap applied to a personal backpack. We, we, we know what a backpack looks like. That's the word phathion in Greek. It's only used two other times in the New Testament in Matthew 23 and verse 4 and in Luke chapter 11 and verse 46. In both cases, the burden was non-transferable. Now what that means is that you and I have personal backpacks. Those who are in the army understand you have your personal backpack. You have to carry your own burden. There are some burdens that are personal backpacks. They are yours to carry. You cannot transfer them to somebody else. Oh, okay, you, you got that look like, okay, make this live, doc. Salvation is a backpack. So let's talk about the backpack of salvation. You see, nobody can believe on the Lord and in the Lord for you. Yeah. See, if you could believe for your children and your grandchildren, everybody would be saved. But salvation is a personal thing. You must believe because Jesus says in John 8 and verse 24, except you believe I'm he, you will die in your sins and you can't be saved unless you believe. There are fundamental facts that you have to to believe you have to believe that Christ came from the bosom of a heavenly father to the bosom of an earthly mother that he partook of human nature that we might partake of a divine nature you have to believe that the door of heaven swung outward to let him out that it might swing inward to let us in you have to believe that he became the son of man that we might become the sons of God. I say you have to believe that he was born in a cattle shed, that he was reared in obscurity, he lived in poverty, and yet his birth sent angels singing and wise men worshiping and shepherds wondering and even the star sent a diamond pointed finger to point out his birth because the cry of a baby in the corner of a crib was an announcement that God had come to earth to visit wearing an earth suit because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and all things were created by him and for him and without 
him was not anything made that was made but the word was made flesh and it dwelt among men you have to believe for yourself that the law is the law in infancy he startled a king in boyhood he puzzled to learn in manhood he even ruled the courses of nature living he loved us dying he saved us resurrected he redeemed us in, and ascended he intercedes for us because he is the everlasting ever loving Lord who saves to the utmost everyone that will believe in him so you have to believe for yourself that's a personal backpack of salvation you see nobody can believe for you Believe it or not, nobody can repent for you. I, I, oh, you know the Bible. It's Luke 13 and verse 3. It's so important that he said it twice. I tell you, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Nobody can repent for you. Nobody can confess for you. He said, if you deny the Lord, that's Matthew 10, 32. If you deny the Lord, the Lord's going to deny you. But if you confess with your mouth that he is Lord, the Lord will confess you. Nobody can believe for you. Nobody can hear for you. Nobody can repent for you. Nobody can confess for you. And honey, nobody can be baptized for you. If baptism washes away your past sin, then you have to get in the water to have your sins washed away. So we can't be sprinkling no water on you. We can't be christening no babies. We can't be sprinkling and pouring. Everybody have to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for the remission of their own sin. That's why we don't baptize babies. That's why we don't baptize babies. That's why we don't christen babies. That's why we have to teach everybody because everybody have to carry their own backpack of salvation. That's a burden you have to bear. I know I'm telling the truth. So there is the backpack of salvation. And then there is the backpack of service. Nobody can work in the kingdom for you. Did you hear what I said? Nobody can do your work. I can't work for my wife. You can't work for your husband. None of us can work for our spouses, our children, our family members. I have to do my own work. And the reason is because nobody can worship for me. Nobody can sing for you. That's why even though you're like me and you're a prison singer, you know, I tell everybody I'm a prison singer. I'm always behind a few bars. <laughs> so if you like me, you're a prison singer. Just sing even though you're behind a few bars because can't nobody sing for you. And I thank God for all of these melodious voices that can sing and lead singing and direct singing and write song. But when worship time comes, nobody can sing for you. And the brother who prays, we say he leads in prayer. That infers that the rest of us are praying too. Because you know what? He can't pray for me. He can't do my praying. He can pray with me.
but he can't do my praying for me. Nobody can commune for me. On the first day of the week when we come together to break bread, I have to remember Christ's broken body and his shed blood. I have to partake of the body and the blood in remembrance of him because you cannot commune for me. And believe it or not, you can't give for me. I have to do my own giving. I have to make my own sacrifice. And when I give 10% of my earning, I'm giving the same percentage of my earning that you give. You gave $10 and I gave 100 But we made the same sacrifice. That's why you need to stop lying to yourself. If the Lord let you win the lottery, you ain't going to give nothing to the Lord. If you ain't giving him any of the little you got, you're not going to give him when you get much. Yeah, he went there, didn't he? The backpack of salvation is personal. The backpack of service is personal. Nobody can perform your duty. Nobody can do your work. There is a niche for you to fill. There is a task for you to face. There is a life for you to live. And you have been called to do a job and a work that nobody can do for you. That's why you need to find your place in the body. We have to do intentional work to create a space and an environment where everybody feel like they can make a contribution to the upbuilding of the kingdom because there is nobody that can do what you can do because God has a work for you to do. People will say you can't and people will say you won't and you shouldn't and you didn't but don't be consumed by what people think or say you gotta find your work and you gotta do your work people will say you can't but God says you can people will say that you won't but God says you will people will say that you don't have what it takes but God says I can and will supply all of your needs People will say you're too far behind to catch up. But God said, remember the last shall be first and the first shall be last. People will say that you are a mess, that you're worthless, that you're no count, that you don't matter much. But God said you are blessed and highly favored. And I made up my mind, I'm going to believe God and leave other people's mess alone you've got a mountain to climb so climb it you've got a battle to fight so fight it you've got an enemy in front of you so overcome him you've got a challenge so conquer it you've got a song to sing so sing it you've got a prayer to pray so pray it you've got a faith to live so live it because God is in your life I say you got God in your your life you got Jesus on your side you got truth in your heart you got wisdom in your head you got fire in your bones you've got God's work in your hand and you got God's worth in your mouth I say you got God's word in your mouth Philippians 4 13 is still in the Bible I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me God's word is in your mouth 1 John 4 4 is still in the Bible greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so the Lord can transform your mess into a message I say the Lord can transform your mess into a miracle that is a message that when other folk give up on you, 
God says, you can be better. You can do more. You can have more because there is a bad path of salvation that is yours to carry. There's a bad path of separation and service that are yours to carry. Thank God that the soul that sinneth it shall die. That's why you can be in the world but he does not expect you to be of the world. You have to carry the backpack of separation for yourself. You can be in the world but you can't be of the world. You can be where they are but you can't be what they are. Love not the world. That's still in the Bible. Therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast. Romans 12 said be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your spirit. Thank God for the backpack of salvation, service, and separation. Bear ye your own There are some burdens that you have to carry for yourself and they are non-transferable. Because he says, I want to tell you, sin is far worse than you might think. That's why you got to carry your own stuff. Sin is worse than you think. It corrupts your character. Yes, yes, yes. It abuses your body. It burdens your back. It wrinkles your brow. It dims your eye. Sin is worse than you think. It bloodies your hand. It hardens your heart. It shames your face. It removes your hope. It ruins your joy. It depletes your peace. Sin is worse than you think. It impairs the senses, it warps the will, it freezes the disposition, it degrades the reputation, it shortens your breath, it destroys your life, but above all, it damns your soul. And that's why Jesus said, I've come, that you might have life and have it, have it how? More abundantly. Carry, bear your own burdens. Because there are some burdens that must be shouldered. I have to carry my own backpack. But then he says, there are some burdens that require self-assistance. But there are some burdens that are so heavy, they require mutual assistance. Some burdens ought to be shouldered, but some burdens ought to be shared. Now let me tell you, if you just keep getting up in the morning, the time is going to come when you are going to face a burden that's bigger than you. So big, you can't carry it. It's not a personal backpack. It's too heavy for you to carry on your back. That's a different word in verse 2 of Galatians chapter 6 when he says, bear ye one another." burden. It's not the word fathion. This is the word 
Baros, B-A-R-O-S, and it means to depress, it means to weight down. He says, there are some burdens that are so heavy and they are so awkward, you can't pick them up by yourself. You have to have some assistance. If this communion table were a piece of furniture in your house, you can't pick that up by yourself. It's too awkward. For most of us, it's too heavy. That's why two brothers move this communion table when we have to do it. Because it's, it's not something you carry on your back. If you are able to pick it up, you can't carry it long by yourself because it wasn't designed for one man to carry as a personal backpack. This is why we have to solicit help. But let me tell you about people helping you carry loads. If you're not careful, folk will solicit you to help them and they'll walk off and leave you with it. Come on now, you know I'm preaching. Come on doc, you're going to mess around and help somebody. Have, 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 have you ever seen a brother or a sister have a load and, and, and this has to be moved piece of furniture in your house and they want to direct traffic come, come help me move come help me move this piece of furniture and, and you say okay get, you get on that end and I get no uh, you just move it now, now how you going to have this as your burden and you gonna tell me to move it and you walk off leaving me with it. Come on, do you know some folk who act like that? So this verse says, practice carrying one another's burdens. You don't take your burden and give it to your brother. You seek assistance from your brother to help you carry your burden. What does it mean to assist? It means that there are some burdens that are so heavy that your brother or your sister needs some help in carrying. What does that look like, brother minister? See, that's why I like talking to you. You ask the right questions. All right. You want to know what that looks like? It looks like unexpected illness. That's a burden that has to be shared. Sudden death of a loved one. Loss of home. If you've ever been in a place where you lost your house, either because of bankruptcy or because of a natural disaster that didn't cover the replacement of your house. That's a burden. Too big for you to carry by yourself. If you've ever gone through a divorce, even if it was an amicable divorce, Nobody goes through a verse without having pain and suffering. And we Christian people need to stop treating divorced people like stepchildren in the body of Christ. I'm talking about burdens. You know, sound like I need to stay there. <laughs> I'm going to move on. <laughs> and, and, and even the single women in our fellowship who are single, every single woman don't want your man. <laughs> you, you don't even want him. Most of the time, you don't want him. So what makes you think just because a woman is single, she wants your man? I told you, I better move on. (laughs) 
See, 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 this is the kind of stuff you get when you get me. <laughs> As a couple of the teenagers say, Doc, I like you because you keep it real. <laughs> I'm just talking about sharing one another's burdens. This is in the Bible. Isn't this in the Bible? I know it don't look, you know, I know it doesn't look like that when you read it, but this is how it looks when I read it. He says, bear ye one another burden. Listen, listen to King James. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2. Practice bearing one another's burdens. Help one another carry these heavy loads. This is Lane's translation. Practice bearing one another's burdens. Help one another carry these heavy loads. And in doing this, you carry out the law of Christ. Stop talking about you are Christ like and you don't help nobody. I know you can't help everybody, but that's no excuse to help nobody. There ought to be somebody that you're willing to make a sacrifice for and put your time, your talent, and your treasure to work to ease somebody else's burden. Because I tell you, some of us are carrying burdens that are too heavy to carry for ourselves. And we don't have physical families who care, who are interested, who even notice that we have a burden. And if we don't get some help at the church house, we'll have help nowhere. We got to get used to carrying one another's burdens. How do you do that, brother minister? Number one, you do it by forgiving and restoring Burdens that are carried by sin. He started out in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. When a brother or a sister has been overtaken in a fault. He says you who are spiritual. You ought to restore such a one. Stop bragging about I, I just can't identify with sister so-and-so. She come down with a confession card every Sunday. She's confessing some sin every Sunday. Well, she got 40 things she's working on. You got 60 and won't even work on your two. At least she's conscious enough I need to be working on my stuff. So I'm down here confessing every Sunday. Will y'all forgive me? I repent. I'm trying to work on it. You in denial of yours. How do we share others' burdens? We do it by patience. We bear the infirmities, even the conceit and deceit of other people. You want to know how you carry burdens? You do it by sympathy. You suffer with people who suffer. You grieve with people who grieve. People who are bereaved. Yes, people hurt when they lose people they love. And if you just keep living long enough, you'll lose your mama. You'll lose your daddy. You'll lose your sister. You'll lose your brother. And when you do, you want somebody to act like they care. You want somebody to call up. You want somebody to give you a case of soda. You want somebody to give you a meal. You want somebody to give you a smile. You want somebody to give you a hug, but at least give me a smile that I care. But above all, I can bear burdens by praying. I can pray for you. And I can pray like everything depends on God. And then I get up off of my knees. And I try to work with you and for you like everything depends on me. And when you fail, when you mess up royally, when you don't take advantage of the opportunities that have been given to you, I don't wash your face in the fact that you were stupid and you made a bad decision and you messed up your life 
and you should have known better. I tried to tell you he was no good in the first place. I tried to tell you that job wasn't for you. In the, that's no time for you to be raking me over the coal when I have fallen flat on my back. You ought to be trying to help me get up. Yes, I learned something from what I went through, but right now I need a hip and hand and not a wagon tongue. Why don't you preach, doc? There are some burdens that are to be shouldered. There are some burdens that are to be shared. Some burdens require self-assistance. Some burdens require mutual assistance. And then there are some burdens that require divine assistance. They're too big for you. They're too big for us. They're even too big for the church. There are some burdens we have to take to the Lord and leave them there. That's why Psalm 55 and verse 22 is in the Bible. And the scripture says, cast your burden upon the Lord. Transfer your burden to the Lord. It's too big for you. The Lane's translation is cast your burden of cares upon the Lord. Commit your problem to the Lord. Unload your burden on the Lord and the Lord will uphold you. The Lord will support you because he's stronger than you are. That's why every once in a while we have to go through what we go through. There are some burden that have to be taken to the Lord. I'm talking about the burden of guilt. I'm talking I'm talking about the burden of doubt. I'm talking about the burden of fear. I'm talking about the burden of bereavement, the burden of death. They are so heavy that I can't carry them by myself. And even the church can't help you carry them. There are some burdens you have to take to the Lord and leave them there if you are facing deep-seated problems and you are battling long-lasting trials. If you are battling with mind-boggling pressures, you got to take them to the Lord. If you're facing long and lonely valleys, dark and dismal nights, cold and cloudy days, sickening, sad trials, there are times when the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, verse 6 and 7, you have to take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Somebody took pen and paper and left us the song we sing every once in a while. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold and you have to get along on meager fare, just remember how in his word, how he feed the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. He said, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. He said, now if your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your soul is sinking in despair Jesus knows the pain you feel somebody knows that song I said Jesus knows the pain you feel he can save and he can heal take your burden to the Lord and leave them there I said leave them there take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. Don't take them there and try to bring them back home. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. And if you leave them there, he can handle them there. You don't have to go back home the way you came. You can take your burden to the Lord and you can leave them there. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, 
hallelujah, I know that's right. If you give them to the Lord and leave them there, he can do with them far better than you can because they're too heavy for you they too heavy for us and when something is too big for us and me it's just right for him some burdens have to be shedded and we're not good enough I say we're not good enough at bringing our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Brother Clark's going to come. I want to pray a prayer, a blessing over your life before we extend the invitation. Just to remind you, there are some burdens that you have to carry yourself. There are some burdens that you have to give to other folk to help you carry. But every once in a while, there are some burdens that are so big that you have to give to the Lord. I said there are some burdens you have to give to the Lord. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. Bear ye your own burdens. Bear ye one another's burdens. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. You can't call God your father if you're not willing to be in the family. You can't ask God to take care of your burdens when you made up in your mind that you're going to serve the devil. Cast your burdens on the Lord. He can't be Lord if you're not willing to submit to his lordship. And that's as simple as remembering your ABCs. A ought to remind you that you have to admit that you're lost and you can't save yourself. Believe B ought to remind you that you have to believe the facts of the gospel. Christ died, he was buried, rose again the third day according to the scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. But C ought to remind you to commit to obeying the commands of the gospel. You have to repent of your sins Acts 17, 30, confess with your mouth, Acts 8, 26 through 39, and be buried with him in water for the remission of your sins. It's as simple as remembering your ABCs. And D ought to remember and remind you, do it now. Do it now. You're closer to obeying God right now than you will ever be again. Don't make me beg you to do what you know you ought to do.